Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. College students should study up on these two tax credits. That's right, says the IRS. You best study up if you don't want us to take you down. But first an attempt at a joke. Hey diddle diddle, who took my fiddle? Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the diddle, the dishman away with the spoon. Prices jump to the moon. The little dog laughed to see such a sight. Which I had something to put in my spoon. God, man, I need some food. Not like drugs or anything like that in my spoon. I'm not Hunter Biden or anything. It is not drugs. I'm just talking food, like good food to put in my spoon. <laughs> good food. Do you have any good food? Oh, fiddlesticks. Do fiddlesticks. You mean a bow? A fiddlestick is a bow. Hey, wait a second. You're the one that stole my fiddle. That's not true. That's impossible. You're the one? Search your feelings. You know it to be true. No! Tax tip 2022-123, August 11, 2022. Anyone pursuing higher education, including specialized job training and grad school, knows it can be pricey. That's for sure. I wish there was a place we can get some accounting instruction at a reasonable at a reasonable price. But in any case, eligible taxpayers who paid higher education costs for themselves, their spouse, or dependents in 2021 may be able to t take advantage of two education tax credits. There's a link to that here. The American Opportunity Tax Credit and the Lifetime Learning Tax Credit. So you kind of group these together typically in your mind as the kind of education tax credits and you're typically thinking of them together because usually you'll take the one of course that would give you the most benefit if you qualify for it because you can't take both of them at the same time generally. And if you don't qualify for that one, then you default to the second one. So the highest benefit one being the American Opportunity Tax Credit, you try to qualify for that. If you don't, then possibly you still qualify for the Lifetime Learning Credit. So they can help uh, offset education costs by reducing the amount of tax they owe. If the American Opportunity Tax Credit reduces the tax to zero, the taxpayer could receive a refund of $1,000. In other words, there's a refundable component to it. So you might be saying, what good is it going to do me if I'm a student, I'm not working that much and so on, and I'm the one that's gonna be taking the credit, then my tax is already basically pretty low because I'm not working much, but there's the refundable component to it, which means that you could get a benefit from it even if it takes your tax liability below zero, which means that technically they still call it a refund, but it's not really a refund at that point. It's kind of like a benefit type of program. So it still may be beneficial. To be eligible to claim either of these credits, a taxpayer or dependent must have received a form 1098T tuition statement. So wherever you are taking your education from, they should be giving you or issuing you a 1098T, giving you the information, at least the stuff that you paid them for example, for the tax documentation. There's a link to that here uh, from an eligible educational institution. However, there are exceptions for some students to claim either credit. Taxpayers must complete form 8863 education credits. There's a link to that here if you wanna check out that form and file it with their tax return. Uh, here are some key things taxpayers should know about each of these credits. You got the American Opportunity Tax Credit is worth a maximum benefit of up to $2,500 per eligible student, only available for the first four years at a post-secondary or vocational school. So you got that limitation there. For students pursuing a degree or other recognized education credential, partially refundable, that's the component that lets you take a credit even if your tax liability basically goes below zero, taxpayers could get up to $1,000 back. That's kind of like the refundable component of it. So if you don't have any taxes that you're owing you, and your, your tax liability is basically zero, but you still qualify for the credit, you might still get a quote refund, even though it's not really a refund at that point, it's basically a benefit kind of program at the refundable component point. So the lifetime learning credit is this is the ones you would take if you couldn't qualify for the other credit because it's worth less typically, but you, you're gonna take it if you, can, if you can get it and you can't qualify for the other one. So worth a maximum benefit of up to $2,000 per tax return per year, no matter how many students qualify. So notice the difference here. 
$2,000 per tax return as opposed to up here where we said $2,500 per eligible student, right? So a big difference on that. Available for all years post-secondary education for courses to acquire or improve job skills. So now you got not that four year kind of limitation and you've got a different kind of a more inclusive item down here, courses to acquire improved or improved job skills available for an unlimited number of tax years. So taxpayers can use the interactive tax assistance tool on irs.gov, irs.gov, irs.gov to figure out if they're eligible for either of these credits. You can check out more information on them if you so choose. Compare education credits. There's a link to that here. You also got publication 970 tax benefits for education. So there's links to all that stuff here. There'll be a link to this in the description.